Hello, my name is Alfred Mattingly, and I'm here to share with you some information about cognitive task analysis. The first big question is, what is cognitive task analysis, or CTA? Cognitive task analysis is a set of tools that work together to accomplish a general job analysis goal. Rather than focusing on the content of a job or aspects of a worker's personality or environment, CTA works to understand the mental processes involved in an expert completing a job's tasks. So rather than focusing on the very tangible step-by-step -step content of a job or on a worker's qualities, CTA focuses on the psychological aspect. What kind of thought processes or information recall is going on while a job is being completed. CTA requires some creativity from an analyst to develop appropriate questions and other materials for data collection, but many resources exist that offer standardized interview formats as well at a analyst's disposal. CTA can be very expensive to complete, as we will discuss later in the presentation, but it also can be tailor-made for an analyst's purpose as well. How is it done? There are several steps involved in conducting a cognitive task analysis, but the first step is actually utilizing another type of analysis, a work-oriented job analysis, that describes a job's duties and tasks. It's important that this step is done prior to the cognitive task analysis, so that information relating to the tasks of a job is already understood and available to the analyst to guide what kind of questions are going to be asked of an expert's thought processes. It would be very unrealistically expensive and time-consuming to do a cognitive task analysis on every single task involved in a job. It's just an unrealistic thing to attempt. And so from the initial work-focused job analysis, one will choose a subset of tasks for further analysis in the CTA. So we're trying to narrow our focus so that the CTA remains realistic in its scope. So it is not an independent methodology that one can just jump into from scratch. It does require some background work in order to gain that information about job tasks and responsibilities. Once the job's tasks are properly obsessed and the subset of tasks are chosen, several different types of CTA methods can be utilized to analyze an expert's mental processes that occur during a job completion. These methodologies include Interviewing subject matter experts. The analyst may interview several experts about their mental processes during work, what kind of thoughts they're having, and what kind of information they need to recall in order to complete a job. The interview may target routine work completion so that an average day's work is assessed. And it can also target critical incidents that have occurred, whether they be positive outcomes or not so positive outcomes, so that an analyst can see if the mental processes are similar or very different in a critical situation as compared to a routine everyday work situation. The second methodology is team communication. This is an observation based methodology that analyzes firsthand or records worker communications that occur during job completion. So this will be an on the field, hands on methodology that sees what kind of communication is being used, what kind of information is being conveyed across experts. There's also the option to diagram one's methods. This offers a visual representation of job tasks, and these can be done in decision trees or go pathways, basically any way that one can display this is how a worker cognitively, thoughtfully, went through the steps of a job, and arrived at their job's goal or final product. One can also use a verbal report. This is very similar to an interview and observation technique where the analyst attempts to get feedback about an expert's mental processes in real time as the worker is completing the job. 
the SME can be prompted to report on their mental processes before, during, or even after job completion. Now it is important to not be too intrusive with this methodology so that a worker's efficiency is not compromised and that the expert does not grow frustrated with you and damage rapport and that the job can still be completed even with real-time feedback occurring. Finally, there is psychological scaling where SMEs are asked to sort, rank, or rate objects related to the job and the analyst is then tasked with linking these ratings to each other and describing the mental processes involved in how the subject matter expert categorized the objects. So you may have an expert organize a collection of tasks or organize a collection of situations according to what categories they may fall under for various information recall. So a mechanic needs to remember X, Y, and Z for replacing a radiator, but not so much for replacing a tail light, something like that. For a more um, in-depth guide to conducting a cognitive task analysis, we have a more step-by-step -step outline. So step one would be researching and defining the scope and purpose of the cognitive task analysis and identifying what the essential tasks are to be observed and who your subject matter experts will be. Second step is identifying knowledge representation. So what kind of knowledge is involved in a task? Is it declarative or factual knowledge? Is it procedural knowledge? Is it um, the ability to creatively develop a solution to a new problem? Um, and accordingly, one would select what kind of methodologies best correspond to assessing the knowledge according to the category. Three would be eliciting knowledge. So this is the actual meat and potatoes of conducting the methodologies and in gaining the job data. Next, you would analyze the data and then organize and share the results, usually in written word and possibly even in verbal word in a presentation, such as this one, about what the analyst has found during the analysis. CTA is best utilized for reducing human error, improving training designs, and increasing reliability. These are the main purposes you would want to focus on for conducting a cognitive task analysis. But there are several procedural considerations to have in mind when using these types of methodologies. Firstly, the information gained from CTA is only as good as the SMEs that are selected for analysis. And so in order to ensure you are selecting high quality SMEs that can give valuable insights into their cognitive processes, one should select these SMEs based on at least two qualifications. These qualifications can be time spent with the organization, awards and accolades they've gained from doing their job, suggestions from the supervisor, education requirements, whatever they may be, have several qualifications that they meet to ensure that your Experts are high quality experts that can give high quality insight. And for the best results, Seamster's team suggests that CTA is conducted best when using a two step, two methodology process, where the first methodology is used to form a hypothesis. This type of information recall is prioritized because of this. And then that hypothesis is tested using the second methodology. If I observe a job situation, then that will give evidence to reject or fail to reject that hypothesis. Like any methodology, there are pros and cons of cognitive task analysis. The advantages of these methodologies are that they collect information about the mental processes that are often left out by other methods. If one uses a work-focused methodology for a job analysis, they will get the nuts and bolts of the job. This is the content, these are the duties done, these are the tools used to do them, this is the final product. That type of analysis will not take into consideration the mental processes, what thoughts are going through the, the workers' minds, what information is being recalled. Additionally, the CTA accomplishes its purposes 
by understanding how an expert mentally processes the work tasks. So you can confidently say using CTA, well this kind of information is being recalled and these kind of thoughts are occurring. And this is explaining why an expert is being so efficient and why the final product is so high quality. It really takes in the cognitive side that other job analysis methodologies just don't consider. However, there are significant cons as well. CTA is very expensive and time consuming. It's difficult to apply to a large range of tasks. It relies heavily upon quality of the subject matter experts, which we've already discussed. So it is important to be upfront with an organization about how expensive and time consuming this kind of methodology can be and why it's important to, to really focus down on a subset of tasks rather than the large expanse of them. So let's take a look at an example of how a CTA can be used. Say an analyst is hired to conduct a job analysis upon city firefighters in order to improve the station's training programs. This is a very important job, obviously, that you would want new firefighters to be well trained in. The analyst first conducts a task inventory, a work-focused analysis methodology, to learn what tasks are involved in firefighting, and then selects a subset of tasks that are related to emergency response practices. The analyst then interviews several experienced members of a team of firefighters, inquiring about the mental processes they go through when responding to an emergency. These questions may involve what does the scene appear to be, what kind of threats may be present, what equipment will I need, how do I ensure safety on the scene? What kind of training am I calling back to to understand these things? Then the analyst may conduct a team communication observation by accompanying the firefighters on an emergency call and observing what kind of communication is utilized to follow the steps effectively. How is the leader of the team trying to delegate tasks? What questions are being asked of other members about the scene or about the inciting incident? What kind of training is being utilized and recalled to address certain aspects of the situation? Again, it is important to not be too intrusive, especially with a job this high stakes as responding to an emergency. Also, the analyst may conduct some psychological scaling, for example, by having team members sort varying types of emergencies, whether it be a shots fired situation or a car accident or a very large fire in an apartment building that they respond to in order of urgency or demand of information that they've acquired. So obviously first aid is going to be of a high order in terms of medical emergencies compared to non medical emergencies. And so the firefighters may group tasks or situations according to that kind of information recall. And finally, the last step would be to, to analyze uh, the data and prepare it in an organized report, um, written and possibly verbal as well, to make some suggestions about the training designs based on what they have found. So that is kind of an applied example of how a cognitive task analysis might work for a given job. If you would like to do any more reading on the subject, here are the resources that I have used for my presentation, and I hope that you have learned a lot and that you have gained a better knowledge of what cognitive task analysis entails and how it can be used. Thank you very much.